Today, I wanna to share with you one of my most favorite concepts that I was introduced to many years ago. And if the title for this video isn't obvious already, I am, of course, talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And I genuinely believe this is such a fantastic ideology for any person to adopt because it teaches this concept that if you want to reach your full potential, there is a somewhat chronological order or a checklist that needs to be met for you to be able to focus on your more particular wants and desires. So in this video, I want to go through the theory of motivation. And of course, we'll certainly go through the different levels of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And then what I would love to do afterwards is just share with you some thoughts on observations that I've had from over the years, as well as just a few that I had as I was putting this video together, which I do feel will help people if they are feeling um, a little bit lost and unsure of their direction in life. So let's just start with the theory of motivation. What had started this whole thing off? Well, Abraham Maslow back in the day was doing research on people's motivation to reach their full potential or just to achieve the things that they wanted in life. And he discovered that people not only had this motivation, that they needed a reason to desire those, uh, those goals. So for example, let's say we've got a man who wants to buy a property. Well, what would be his motivations for doing that? Why does he want a property? Well, you might say that one man might say that he wants to just have a shelter. Uh, another might say that he wants to have a place that he can call his home. And then you might also have another person who would say that, you know, that they want to look to settle down, they want to get married and have children, and that they want a place that they can then raise those children in a very safe environment. Now, each of these motivations are just as equally and important as each other. But by understanding that there has to be a justification behind the motivation, then that is what gives people that desire or drive to go and achieve it. But this is now where the hierarchy of needs come in, where it's not always easy to go straight for that top thing. So using again the example of buying a property, well, I mean, you can't just, you know, wake up one morning and go, right, you know what, I'm going to just buy a house. It's not as easy as that. There are other drives or needs that need to be met for you to eventually reach that desired goal. And Maslow had discovered that there are many different kind of needs that have to be met, both biological and also uh, spiritually and physically and, and so on. And this was the uh, the idea that was born from uh, his research. And there is a much more advanced version of this where I've seen that there are eight different levels and it has things about transcendence and uh, I can't think what the other one was called. Uh, I think it was about more about the spirituality as well. Um, but I personally believe I don't think there's any need to overcomplicate uh, a very simple idea, um, even if it does mean going into a bit more depth. I think it can tend to overconfuse things for people. So for me, I like the fact that there are these five uh, levels of um, reaching self-actualization. So what is then the hierarchy? Well, Maslow had discovered that you've got to meet the most basic needs first to be able to evolve to the more important needs or those needs that are more of a want where people maybe don't necessarily need them. Like a holiday, you know, people can live without holidays, but it's more of a want. But to get that, you've obviously got to be making money. You've got to already um, be in a position that you have a home and safety and security. 
So let's just go through um, each of these. So starting off at the bottom, uh, Maslow discovered that people need a physi physiological need met first. So these are the needs that are for basic human survival. So we're talking about things like air, drink, food, so air, food, water, uh, sleeping, uh, shelter, so a roof over their head, uh, clothes for warmth and even uh, reproduction as well. Just essentially anything that you could imagine uh, sort of uh, this sort of like caveman like behavior. What would you do if you were thrown out into the wild? What things would you need to be able to survive? So that was then the physiological needs that he felt that when they were met, you could move into the safety needs, which starts going more into being in a society or a civilization. Um, so these were then the, the needs that allowed people to have maybe either a freedom from fear or just something that gave them the ability to, uh, to sustain themselves or their own lives. So these would be things like actually having employment, so having a job, making money, um, healthcare, having insurance over your health and well-being, or law and order. And no, I don't mean the TV show. I mean, knowing that if you are living in an environment that you have some level of of protection in that environment. The next level up, I've got an itchy nose now, my goodness. Um, the, the next level up uh, after that would be the love and belonging, which I think is a bit of a woo-woo title. Personally, I would call this more social needs because this one is more about being part of a community. This idea of feeling wanted or wanting other people or having friendships or even relationships with people as well. This idea that you are uh, part of something great or part of a team. Um, I think then, in fact, this is where then the next level of esteem comes in that when you do start to feel wanted, you start feeling better about yourself. You start feeling more confident. So certainly esteem is very close to love and belonging. But uh, Maslow had uh, discovered that um, esteem is split into two particular categories, uh, and these are self-belief and reputation and respect. So with self-belief, we are talking about the limiting beliefs here, just that shift in you seeing that maybe, you know what, you've got potential or these doubts that you had about yourself, maybe they really aren't as bad as you thought they were. Um, You've also then got the reputation like and respect. So people acknowledging you and maybe you are getting some status. So like if you're in a job or if you are dating very attractive people, then suddenly people see you in a higher regard. So having esteem then worked on, feeling more confident about yourself, this then leads into the last area of self-actualization, which is when you are realizing your full potential and you are seeking out personal growth. And personal growth can certainly be interpreted in a number of ways, especially in the self-improvement world. But for me, it's this understanding of you are looking to then develop or learn and get more hobbies and evolve your education. You know, self-actualization could be you wanting to learn some kind of sport of sort. And then again, you get part of a community, you feel wanted, you feel desired, people uh, look up to you, maybe even make money from it as well. Um, so again, you get that self-actualization there. But even on the education front, learning a second language, learning new skills like uh, like carpentry or trading and stuff. You know, these are then skills that also, if you're de developing a level of independence, just shows you the potential that you have and that you aren't reliant on other people and that you are doing stuff yourself. And you probably then even become a teacher. You become that 
uh, inspiration or role model for other people as well, which also, you know, fuels your uh, your self-esteem, not necessarily ego, but self-esteem and, uh, and confidence. Um, and in fact, as I've mentioned that, I think what a lot of people tend to confuse, especially with people who do get maybe a bit too narcissistic, is that there is a difference or a separation between narcissism and self-actualization. People who are narcissistic Yes, they believe uh, very confidently in themselves, but they then kind of believe how other people should worship them and that they are better than other people. Whereas a person who discovers self-actualization, they actually also want to help other people reach their potential as well as the potential that they have realized and seen in themselves. So that is Maslow's hierarchy of needs and certainly a brief explanation of motivation. Uh, But what observations did I have from uh, all of this as well? Well, um, my first observation that I had was that um, that as sex was right at the bottom of this uh, this le- of this hierarchy, um, that it, I found it quite interesting, uh, especially from what I saw over the years, that uh, men do struggle reaching self actualization, you know, especially if they aren't having this basic need met. That they by not having sex, all of these other things just seem irrelevant to them, and they certainly develop a lot of limiting beliefs about themselves. They don't feel part of a community, or they feel like other people in their community don't see them in the highest regard because they aren't having sex. They have a lot of doubts about themselves, and you know they could be making a lot of money, but if they aren't having sex, then yeah, it, it just feels like, uh, or I get a sense that they just believe that they are right at the bottom of this list. So it's interesting how by not having anything reproductive going on in their lives, even if it's just for um, pure uh, recreation, then they just it, it just seems to invalidate everything about themselves, even if they are successful people. And I've met people from all walks of life, but as soon as they're not having reproductive sex or just recreational sex, they they, they all seem to be at the bottom. So I just thought that was kind of a, an interesting thought. Um, my second observation that I had was that, you know, for you to be able to achieve any of these things, you need to be making money to support your lifestyle and friendships. It's very difficult to, you know, be going out and or going on dates if you just don't have the income for it. Or it's very difficult to, you know, go to a personal chain uh, trainer or work on your diet and stuff if you just don't have the money for it. Same with going on holidays. Like I've known people who, you know, the fact that they just don't go on holiday much Uh, actually bothers them and they feel very jealous and envious of other people who go on holidays and travel and they it just knocks their confidence it knocks their self-esteem so money in a way is kind of like the root of everything here and that you know without it it is very difficult to move up this hierarchy and achieve all of the great things that you want to do You can certainly do some things on the cheap, like, you know, the like drinking water or eating food. I mean, you can do that on the cheap. You know, you can find places to rent, uh, stay in hostels and stuff. You can buy a tent and do that. But again, you need money still to be able to support whatever kind of lifestyle you want. So if guys aren't thinking about, you know, the money that they're making and just you know, working out how to very strategically spend their money, then it is difficult to kind of achieve a lot of these things. So sadly, money is the root of all of the problems really with uh, with anything to achieve self-actualization in this day and age. My next observation that I had um, was that there's uh, a, a shift in belief in oneself is what's necessary to see and experience potential. So this is talking about, um, so that was it. So for um, 
uh, to reach self-actualization, you need to change your limiting beliefs about yourself. And in fact, it's just interesting how if you can change whatever doubts you have to something that's more positive or something that's more optimistic and encouraging, then you can reach self-actualization much faster. Um, So if you are having a lot of doubts about yourself, or no matter where you are on this hierarchy, even if you're just looking to get your most basic physiological and uh, safety needs being met, your limiting beliefs can be the thing that still prevents you from achieving any kind of success um, faster than it could be. So I think that's just uh, just a very interesting concept that you know wherever you are in your life, if you can start just shifting your belief to something more positive and you know, believing in yourself that you can do it, you stand a chance, you know, give yourself that encouragement, almost like being your best friend or being your own coach and be like, right, you can do this. I believe you can do this. Then it's possible that that will help give you that motivation to reach these needs much faster. And as I say, get to that self-actualization um, with uh, uh, in quicker time as well. And then my last observation that I had was that, uh, you know, interestingly to reach self-actualization, um, all the needs need to be met to live a fulfilled life. And this is kind of a, a controversial observation because you do have people who don't necessarily need all these things. You have monks who, you know, can spend all their time meditating as long as they've got a shelter, they've got uh, a bit of food and water, you know, they don't necessarily need to be, you know, going out traveling the world or feeling part of a community or, um, you know, or getting married or having kids or anything like that. Um, and you get people who can live very minimalistic lives. They they love to travel. They love to see the world. They could spend very little money, if any needed, and they can, you know, live their full potential and be incredibly happy. So I think really this idea is just going to apply more to, um, to Westerners, really, people who um, do like or enjoy more material materialistic things in their lives that is going to help them to reach that that full potential but ultimately you don't necessarily need all of these um, to uh, to reach your potential um, I think it's just being able to understand that you just need elements of these to reach your potential. Uh, I mean, hell, I mean, you've got nudists who absolutely love not wearing any clothes. So, you know, um, there, there is an argument to say like they're, fi- they're not meeting all of their physiological needs with that. And you've also got people who um, are actually okay being celibate. They just don't mind not having sex or you've got people who just aren't interested in it at all and they also live really happy lives and they are things that are right at the bottom of this diagram so overall um i mean i think maslow's hierarchy of needs really is a great concept um it it can obviously be taken uh with a pinch of salt in some ways but if you can encourage yourself to adopt this ideology of like okay if I want to be able to travel the world, what needs are being met first that will allow me to get to that potential? Do I need more money? Do I need to do I need clothes to fit into a certain place or part of a community? Do I want friendships and relationships first? You know, whatever your your end goal is, like if you're wanting to get married and, and have and have kids then, you know, maybe you need money first to be able to afford, you know, a particular lifestyle that then makes you more attractive to people or allows you to fit into society that will then help you to find people that are attracted to you and vice versa. And you will um, connect with each other that way and find your, uh, your friendships and relationships that way. So 
I'll let you kind of do the research on your own for the rest of this concept. But I, I do think this is such a brilliant uh, diagram to follow. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as well. So do leave a comment or any comments below and let's get a discussion going uh, about it. But other than that, thank you very much for watching. Like the video, subscribe to the channel and, um, and enjoy the, uh, the rest of your day.